Now, as much criticism as Ubisoft gets, obviously their games sell. So this is not a numbers problem. But in terms of a fan reception problem, I really think for a lot of years now, Ubisoft has had a protagonist issue. And I truly believe that it spawned from Assassin's Creed way back in the day. So Nate, this is one of our favorite franchises. We're going to kind of talk about it together, kind of get into the meat and bones of it. And if people enjoy this, I hope they leave a like and I hope they subscribe because that would be just awesome. Really what I wanted to talk about today was Ezio. I mean, that's the core of this problem, but before I get like a million dislikes and IEDs appearing at my doorstep, <laughs> I want to say that I love Ezio as a character. I think he's fantastic. I love how charming he is, how well-written he is, and honestly, he's probably the best developed assassin in Assassin's Creed because he got three main games and then, of course, you know, he got some spinoff stuff as well and a movie. You can see this problem, this Assassin's Creed protagonist problem, leeching over into other franchises very early on, but also affecting Assassin's Creed in a major way. Because something I've noticed is that pretty much every character, every main assassin that has come after Ezio has in some roundabout way by the fandom been compared to Ezio. Mm -hmm. And one that you brought up that was a really good example of what we're talking about to just kind of get into it right away was Connor. Yes. Well, and I think Connor kind of gets an unfair comparison because his game was directly after the Ezio one. So yeah, After a whole trilogy yeah, of after Ezio. the whole trilogy of, of Ezio games. I think there's an unfair criticism with a lot of the characters, a lot of the main Assassin's Creed characters, in that they all get compared to Ezio. Everyone latched on to Ezio and his charm, uh, his good looks, his good character development. They love that. Especially the looks for me. That's the right. thing I, mean, I that, look for. Yeah, that's what I look for. And that's what I value people with. Well, actually. mainly male characters for me. Right. But no, you're so, right. I mean, that that whole trilogy coming off the back of that, and you have so long yeah, to expand right. on him. Well, and I think everyone drew to that character, and they loved him, and they thought, this is a great character, this is a good assassin. And then Connor's game came out, and then obviously Edward's game came out, which people love Edward, and I'll get to that in a second here. But other, all these games came out afterwards, and everyone's just saying, well, this character is not really that good. And then the comparison always comes out. It's like, well, why? And then they're like, well, look at Ezio. Yeah, that's always how it comes like, back come to come on. Like, this is not Ezio. That's, like, that's one thing that frustrated me is I think that Ubisoft, as much as I love the Ezio trilogy, it was, in a way, also a mistake. Yes. For them. Yeah. Because by expanding a character by three games, you give him so much breathing room and so much to do. And I think that this also comes down to a problem with modern Assassin's Creed, which is, yes, the games are very long, and even the games before that are still kind of long games before you mm -hmm. hit the RPG era. But you still don't have multiple entries set over the course of decades. Right. That's the whole thing with Ezio is he got a massive portion of his life in two. He got a very close look at a big chapter, like mm -hmm. a specific chapter of his life in Brotherhood. And then in Revelations, it's kind of his twilight years. I mean, we get to see, if you look at it, we get to see Ezio... From the time he's born mm -hmm. to the time he dies, if you include Embers and the opening of Assassin's Creed 2 and everything. Yeah. And we get to see him pop up and cameo in other things. Like, for example, Lineage is about his father. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you also have him popping up in Chronicles China, kind of mentoring Xiao Jun a little mm -hmm. bit. And because of that, I do think it's a testament to how good of a character Ezio is. Like, right. obviously, this is a good thing for Ezio. Right. He's a well-written, very strong character with a lot of screen time and a lot of development. But because they went that direction for him, and they really haven't for anyone else, they've tried to do, like, one, basically one game per character after that. Yeah. It's kind of hit the point where it's annoying that everyone's compared to Ezio, but it's also annoying that there is a valid point mm -hmm. in a way to comparing everyone to Ezio because he had so much time to breathe. Right. And that's kind of frustrating that they won't give that to other characters, too. Well, yeah, and I think it's it's frustrating on both ends because someone like Connor... Now, Connor's one of my favorite assassins. Actually, he's my second favorite assassin. Someone like Connor, I think, is actually a very good character. And in my opinion, he got a very, very unfair bashing from the fan base. He got beaten down. He did. And, like, the fan base, I, I don't think it was justified. Like, the fan base's criticism of him was... This guy's too serious. 
he's too boring. He's too bland. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of like, okay, first of all, serious does not mean bad. Like, Ezio's charming. Ezio's funny. Connor's not. That doesn't mean he's bad. Well, the, the but, thing I don't understand is some of the most popular characters ever have been very, very serious. Well, yeah, and it's like, and like, why is this a criticism? Like, he's too serious and boring. Okay, let's look at his life. Let's look at Connor's life here. He uh, he had his entire village destroyed. Mm-hmm. He watched his mother get burned to death and crushed to death from a child. Like, he was a child at the time. Uh, he grew up in a world where the British and the Americans were both developing their own civilizations in his land. Yeah. And now there's a fear of his own people getting kicked out of their land. and Which all, inevitably pretty much happens. It, yeah, it does inevitably happen. And also, on top of that, all the people that are supposedly his friends, you know, like the Americans, because he's working with the Americans, he's not exactly friends with the Americans, but they tolerate each other. They, a lot of them actually don't really see him as a human like right. a fully 100% human being. It's like, it's like, sorry, this guy's not charming. They see sorry, him this as... Guy, yeah, it's like they see him as like a half human. The Patriots kind of see him as a useful resource. I mean, you can tell that George Washington and Sam Adams respect him as a yes. man. Yes, yes, those two are good. But outside of them, there is a lot of condescension and talking down yes. to Connor in the game. There is a lot of the attitude of like, we know better than you. Yeah. Basically, I mean, right. they even refer to a lot of the Native Americans as savages yes. at different points in the game. And when you look at it, too, also, you, there's some stuff you even missed. Like, he's also a war veteran. Yes, he had to fight yep. in multiple major battles yep. that weren't his responsibility no. that he had to do. No. He was forced to murder quite a few people, mm-hmm. and he was betrayed by his childhood best friend. Yep. And he found out his dad, his dad, like his true dad, was out to kill him. And was a Templar. Yep. So, so like, like n- now, like we can trauma compare, obviously, because Ezio has a he lot had, of he stuff had trauma too, too. But the thing is, everybody deals with things differently. It does. So when you get down to it, I always thought that was an unfair criticism too with someone like Connor, because if you want to talk about criticisms with three, talk about how the game ran when it launched. Mm-hmm. Talk Fair. about how it looked when it launched. Fair. Like it's much better now, but that game should not have launched the way it did. No. And I say that as it being one of my favorite AC games. It's my second favorite. You were going to mention this with Edward, and I'm, I'm yeah. going to say it with Arno, too. Have you noticed how some of the most likable and considered best assassins have a lot of the same character traits that yes. Ezio did in terms of how the fandom has accepted that character? Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone like Edward. Mm-hmm. Edward, I'd say, is, for the most part, a pretty similar character. He's he's, he's almost like Pirate Ezio. Yeah, he's Pirate Ezio. He, he's charming. He's funny. He's sarcastic. He, you know, like that, that's who his character is. He has a hard time opening up to people, right. just like Ezio does mm-hmm. a little bit. But once he forms for relationships and friendships, they're very long lasting. Yep. He's almost like an, he's almost an extrovert that was forced introverted yeah. by trauma and stuff mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. They have a lot of very similar character beats. It's just that they also deal with things very similarly, like snarky, making, you know, comments, being yeah. sarcastic, being willing to stand up to authority. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of similar character traits, and so does Arno. Yeah, Arno's Arno's a lot of the same way. I would say Arno's even more based off of Ezio in some ways. Yeah, he is. Than Edward is. Yeah, and like, I'd say Edward is probably the general consensus second favorite assassin. Yeah. Um, well, well, a lot I, of people I mean, like, love that game that don't yes. even love Assassin's Creed. Right. So and that's it's like that's a thing too. So for me, it's like okay. So the second favorite assassin is a guy who's basically a carbon copy of Ezio. Like, that's not a coincidence to me. It, to me, the it comes down to Ezio got a lot of content, which, great for him. Good for him. I love Ezio. Mm-hmm. But now the problem turns into every assassin after that has now been compared to Ezio, kind of like what you said at the very beginning of the video. Yeah. It's, we can't accept Connor because Connor's not charming and fun. But now Assassin's Creed 4 comes out. Oh, hey, here's a charming and fun character. Who's Ezio? Who's a pirate? Well, you, oh, we love this guy. You actually see a lot of revisionist history, too. Believe it or not, people really liked Altair when his game came out. Yeah. Now I've seen a lot of takes online in more modern, the last, I would say, five, ten years that are like, you know, Altair was pretty boring. Yeah, I know. It's and like, it's like, well, what you, is this? people didn't think that right. when Assassin's Creed 1 came out. There's a reason why Assassin's Creed 1 spawned a very popular franchise. Right, interesting characters, yes. amazing world to explore, history, you know, all that stuff. And I do want to oppose opposition to one tiny thing. I don't think Edward is a carbon copy. 
No. Like, I, I just think he's very similar. He's very similar. Um, and the reason, the only reason I want to clarify that is because you will have, like, you know, uh, Edward Sucker 32 in the comments <laughs> will, like, be really upset about that. Right. But I just think that a lot of the characters that are, that catch on with the franchise as fans mm -hmm. are very similar to each other. And I've even seen people clamor for another Ezio game now. But I do think some of the least popular assassins have been one of two things. They've either been less actively involved in the Brotherhood, which I would say is a little bit more of an RPG era thing, mm -hmm. or they've been not at all like Ezio. Yeah. And I, look, maybe to some that's a coincidence, but I don't personally think it is. And I think it extends outside of this franchise. If you look at things like Watch Dogs, mm -hmm. Watch Dogs 1 with Aiden Pierce. A lot of people dog on that character. I really enjoy him. I think that game is much more enjoyable when you start realizing Aiden Pierce is not exactly a great guy. Yeah. He's kind of a psychopath. Mm -hmm. He's very damaged. He's just a guy operating by a pretty messed up moral code trying to get to a net positive mm -hmm. of good who does a lot of bad things to get there. Um, but like a lot of people really didn't like that he was very stoic, very serious, talked to himself a lot and didn't talk to other people that much, didn't open up. Didn't really crack very many jokes. A lot of people did that. So what did they do? Watch Dogs 2. It just completely about faces and the main character is like really jokey, mm -hmm. like uh, Gen Z hacker type, like, hey, hey guys, what's up? Oh, LOL. You know, like very <laughs> right. off the wall, like supposed to be fun and silly. Mm -hmm. And you kind of see that happen in these Ubisoft franchises where they've slowly gone from that more serious take yeah. to almost a little bit more out there like, whoa, guys, isn't this funny? Look. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with a charming character that's funny, cracks jokes. Mm -hmm. But I do think that this Ezio problem extends outside of Assassin's Creed even. Yeah. Well, and I think it also just kind of speaks to a general societal problem is I'm going to make a weird comparison here, but bear with me. The MCU, I think, has opened up, or I should say highlighted a problem that was in society where if you look at the MCU, which I love, the MCU has a problem with jokes mm -hmm. and they have a problem with humor. Every MCU movie thinks it needs to be like the you know funniest thing in the world. And some of them are funny. Like, I love the MCU. But I think that kind of just speaks to a further societal problem where if someone's wanting to watch content or they're wanting to play content or whatever, they're wanting to experience something, they feel like they want to have a good time. And part of that has to do with the main character. You mm -hmm. see that in Assassin's Creed, you see that in Watch Dogs. You know, not everyone wants to go through a Schindler's List experience where <laughs> Boy, it's just right. depressing and it's sad and like... But there can but, be a middle ground Well, and that's here. the thing is like there can be a middle ground, but also I don't think a stoic or a, uh, you know, more serious character out there means bad. And that that's the part that bothers me is it's almost as if if the character is not hilarious and slapstick funny, everyone's like bad character. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's like, why does that have to be a bad character? Yeah, you can have the Ezios, you can have the Edwards, you can have the Arnos, you can have the Jacob Fries that do add some, you know, lightness to the 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 franchise. You can have whoever the guy from Watch Dogs Two's name is. I I honestly don't remember, know who. You know is. what's funny? I forgot. Yeah, it's because like, to I, me, he's very forgettable. Right. Like Aiden was very memorable. Right. And later on, as they kind of moved away from that to try and get more, like, silly, parody, yeah. whatever, I feel like it just lost some of its identity. Yes. And, like, the thing is, you can have those characters to lighten the mood, and, and, I, and if you like them, great. But I just don't understand why serious means bad. Serious no. doesn't mean bad. In fact, serious just means they're dealing with their issues differently. Let's be honest, Ezio is and always will be one of the main faces of the Assassin's Creed brand. Yeah, and rightfully so. Yeah, he earned it. Right. And he absolutely did. But also, this isn't Uncharted. Mm -hmm. This is not Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. This is not God of War. The whole series isn't just him. Yes. And that, to me, is where it pisses me off. Because with those games, you know, with... Batman, Arkham, God of War, uh, you know, and the, the other ones I mentioned, like Tomb Raider, Uncharted, Halo with Master Chief. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is an expectation that that is the main character. Right. It hasn't been that for years 
we've gone through so many different titles and I guess I get a little tired of everybody needing to be compared to Ezio because of it. Mm -hmm. He matters. He will always matter. He will never be unimportant. He will always be one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. I like Ezio even more than you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm still on this rant (laughs) because it's frustrating to go into these games every time and enjoy them. But then if you check anywhere on the internet or anything, everyone will be like, well, I prefer that. It's like, okay, I get it. And you are free to have that opinion. Right. But like, do we really need to always look back at that specific one? Mm -hmm. You know, because if you want to talk about branching out the games, doing multiple entries to, you know, to highlight their life and do more with them. And you want to talk about that from the Ezio age. I'm, I'm on board with you. Mm -hmm. hundred percent. I think there's a lot of characters that could use a second game, even characters from games years ago that I would be completely open to going back and exploring more of their life in the animus. Mm -hmm. But let's not kid ourselves and pretend that everybody has to be based off of that assassin, because I also think that would be incredibly boring. Can you imagine the amount of Assassin's Creed games we've already had and the amount of criticism they've gotten for the amount of games they've made if every character after Ezio just had Ezio elements in him? It'd be boring. Yeah, dude, it would be way too much. I mean, even if you want to see it as like a good thing, that would be too much of a good thing. Mm-hmm. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah, it, it would start to beg the question of like, well, the assassins here are doing some pretty serious things, and every character is like, "Hey guys, woo!" <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, like it worked for Ezio, right? It and works for Edward. It worked like, in their timeline, in their story, for what they were doing. Yeah, but you also run into the problem eventually of basically having the downtown Avengers scene where it's like <laughs> you have a thousand nine elevens happening. Hey, everywhere. want some shawarma? And it's like, well, I don't call that a party. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you hit a point where you're like, all right, now that Mirage is going back to that more classic style, that critique, that SEO critique was something that existed, especially in that classic style all the way through the end of it. Yeah. And so I really do think that you will see people comparing You know, you'll see them comparing Mm -hmm. protagonists back to Ezio. Well, yeah, and that's the other thing is... Even if not by name, by the way. Like, a lot of times people don't say Ezio. They say things like, well, the character was too serious. And to me, that's still a comparison back to two and brother It totally is. It totally is. Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to say, because, like, I think a lot of people say, well, I I don't see people say Ezio's name. Yeah, they don't always say it. But they mean it. There's an underlying (laughs) meaning to, like, I played the earlier games, and I liked... Two, three, bro- or uh, sorry, two Brotherhood Revelations, four. Mm-hmm. Those were the best. They were the most fun. You know, a character that is nothing like Ezio in a lot of ways, but I think is expertly written and underutilized is Xiao Jun. Mm-hmm. And I've made that comment a hundred times, but it, it'll always be true. And I think that it goes to show that there are characters that I think fly under the radar. There are some weaker assassins, too, in terms of writing. But I think that overall, the main protagonist of Assassin's Creed is usually pretty Mm well-written. And I think that they're usually pretty well-written, whether they draw elements from the past, from Ezio, or whether they draw none and go forward. And I think that when they're not well-written, to me, it's situations like elements of them that could have been much better, like Connor, where it was a narrative decision to bump past some of his development instead of showing it. That kind of stuff, though, I don't think necessarily rests on characterization. It rests on a poor writing decision by writers to try and skip ahead. Yeah. Well, and I think one way to remedy that if you're Ubisoft is maybe just make more content based on your assassins. Like, why is it that Ezio gets unlimited amount of screen time, but characters like Connor get a game? Mm -hmm. And it's not even a game. It's half a game. Yeah, it's like three-fourths. Like, yeah, like literally the first first uh, one-fourth of the game is literally Haytham. Yeah. And then you have a whole sequence of Connor who's a kid, which mm. is interesting, and I'm happy it's there, but I feel like having maybe a sequel to that, maybe have a sequel where Connor is a little older, you know, and maybe like he has a kid now and training her, or, you know, or whatever you want to do with this. I feel like giving a second game to someone like Connor... Or a second game to someone like the Fry Twins. Mm -hmm. Or a second game to someone like Arno. Or even even Bayek or Cassandra or Ivor. Now, those games are huge. But I'm saying, if you give them something else, 
that you, the same treatment you gave to Ezio, or even half the treatment you gave to Ezio, I feel like more fans would actually come back to them mm -hmm. and realize, like, hey, wait a minute, this character wasn't so bad. Because now instead of, let's say, 30 hours of gameplay of a story gameplay with Assassin's Creed 3, we'll say 10 hours of that is Haytham, so 20 hours that Connor gets. What if you gave him a second game of an additional 30 hours, and now he has 60 hours of screen time? Your math was off a little bit, but I agree. Well, yeah, whatever whatever the math comes out to. That's it's okay. Like, so, I'm you a little know, scared that you've been helping me build furniture recently. Uh, <laughs> those numbers. What if you add 10 more hours and it's 200 hours? <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> but, like, very but good, Nathan. Nathan. Here's a cookie. <laughs> but, like, what if he gets a second game, mm -hmm. so he doubles his amount of time? Even uh, Altair. Something, even he, someone like Altair. Well, look at what they did with Altair. He got a game... And he, he got he, he got, got a little the, bit in Revelations. He he got enough in Revelations. Yes. So he got a, he got a decent to see amount. his ending of his life. And you also got to see I think a flashback in two, yeah. where you go back and and view a memory with him and stuff. So like you get little bits there, and then of course you also have the DS stuff. I I don't really, you know, like the DS and PSP with Ezio and and Altair. Yeah, sure, it's probably canon or whatever, but like most people don't really play it honestly most people probably don't even know it exists correct yeah so so, <laughs> so when you get into that it's uh, a little harder but i do think that with that if you give them some more time to build off of those characters and do more even if you were to do something simple like try and make a game you know two games per family mm -hmm. say you take edward and you did a game about edward and then a game about his descendant which you kind of did. Yeah. That's an interesting idea and a good way to do it. Now, I would argue that you want to include the the progenitor in the Descendants game, though. Mm -hmm. And I think that one way that Assassin's Creed 3 and 4 feel disconnected is that by the time of Assassin's Creed 3, Edward's gone. Yeah. So because of that, you don't get that mentoring father figure role out of him. I do think that that's a way, though, that you can do a lot more and give them kind of that same treatment while moving on, is maybe you give Connor a game, then you give his daughter a game, but Connor's a prevalent figure in it. Yeah. Maybe he even has some missions, but he's older, maybe he's not capable of quite the same level his daughter is mm -hmm. anymore, but he has some missions himself. Well, kind of like what they did with Aya in mm -hmm. Origins, where you do some stuff with one character, but it's mostly another. Yeah. I think you could very easily do that and remedy this problem as well, and have your cake and eat it too, because you're also moving on to someone new. Mm -hmm. It's well, also a passing of the torch. Well, and yeah, and you can even do some cool, interesting stuff that I feel like a lot of fans would like is having some team up missions. Mm -hmm. You know, something like uh, Arkham Knight did it well, where you had some fights where you can actually actively swap between characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, what if you had that where, let's say, you had Connor and his daughter? Maybe they're having to assassinate this character. And you want to move Connor up on this ledge and then move his daughter somewhere and then switch back to Connor. You know, and you like do some team up kills. Kind of like in Halloween Ends. Where Michael and oh, no. uh, Corey team <laughs> oh, up. Oh no, okay, someone. I don't <laughs> want to talk about that. <laughs> but anyway, so I mean, you know, you, you could do some fun elements here. Yeah. Where like you have team up missions or something like that. So then you are giving that character more screen time like you just said. But then you're also saying as a franchise, yeah, but we also want this new character. We're also moving past it. Yes. I also think so, that that's a good way to connect the games and move on while preserving the past. Yes. And, you know, continually having references back to the past or indexes with notes and lore and stuff like that, I think it's important too. But I just think it's important not to get so caught up on just one version of the character. Yeah. Because I do think that then... If the franchise were to just do that, just do carbon copies of Ezio, I think in a lot of ways the fans would miss out on some really cool stuff. And some really cool story elements. Yeah. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments down below and why every character should or should not be Ezio. I think there should be no middle ground here at all. And I think, in fact, they should just start referring to every character as Ezio. Whether Ezio male the or second female. or Ezio the third. No, just Ezio Auditore. Oh. But their parents are, like, named something else completely. Oh, got it. So every parent just loved the name. I wanted to see Bayek be born, but he was a white baby named Ezio. And it was just no explanation. <laughs> it was basically just my character from NBA 2K16. <laughs> Didn't make sense. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Have a fantastic day. And as always, everyone, stay shway.